Okay, um, in order to use, uh, to look at Feynman diagrams, in order to look at all of our particle interactions, we need to understand conservation laws. Conservation laws enable us to see if an interaction will occur or not, or sometimes it enables us to identify what the missing particle might be. Very, very straightforward concept, as long as we remember all of our particles and where they all belong in the table. Okay? So if we look at an interaction such as this, we've got an anti-muon going to a, a positron, plus an anti-muon neutrino, plus an electron neutrino. So we have to say, well, will this balance? Can it occur? So we could look at charge. We could look at lepton number. And we could look at baryon number. We could also look at strangeness, and I'll do that later on. So we think, well, does our muon have a charge? Yes, it does. It's plus one. Does our positron have a charge? Yes, it does. It's plus one. Does our anti-muon neutrino have a charge? No, it doesn't. And our electron neutrino doesn't. So does it balance? One on this side, one on that side. Yes, it balances. So charge balances. This interaction could occur in terms of charge. What about lepton number? Well, the lepton number of this is minus one because it's an anti-lepton. And that goes to be a positron, which is also an anti-lepton. Plus an anti-muon neutrino, which is an anti-lepton. Plus an electron neutrino, which is a lepton. So on the left, we've got minus one. And on the right, we've got minus one, minus one, plus one, which is minus one. So both sides do balance. Baryon number is very easy because nothing there is a baryon, so it's naught, goes to naught plus naught plus naught. So this interaction can occur, and we've shown it can occur, by using charge, lepton number, and baryon number. Other interactions, for example, a neutron plus uh, an anti-muon turns to a proton plus an anti-muon neutrino. Let's see if this can happen, so we'll just look at charge lepton number and baryon number again. So the charge on the neutron is zero. The charge on this muon, this anti-muon, is plus one. The proton is plus one. And the anti-muon neutrino has no charge. So that can happen. This side, the neutrino, sorry, the neutron is not a lepton. This here, this uh, is an anti-muon, so its lepton number is minus one. The proton is not a lepton, but the anti-muon neutrino is an anti-lepton, therefore minus one and minus one, it does balance, therefore so far it can occur. We've got baryon number, we've got the neutron is a baryon, that's not a baryon. The proton is a baryon, this is not a baryon, so this interaction can also occur because charge, lepton number, and baryon number are balanced on both sides of this equation. So this can also occur. Okay, this one here. Now this one brings in something else into play, which we talk about when we look at strangeness. We've got charge, lepton number, and baryon number. Now can it happen? The charge on the kion is zero, the charge on the proton is one, the charge on the neutron is zero, but the pion is one. So charge-wise, this balances. The lepton number, the kion is not a lepton, the proton is not a lepton, the neutron is not a lepton, and neither is the pion, so it can balance, because remember, the kion and the pion are mesons, not leptons, the kion is not a baryon either, so it has no baryon number. The proton is a baryon, and the neutron obviously is a baryon. The pion is not a baryon, so that all balances. But one thing which is not conserved is strangeness. Now, strangeness is not conserved in this interaction because the kion has strangeness. It's got a strange quark. The pion does not have a strange quark in it. So we know strangeness is not conserved. So therefore we know that this is a weak interaction 
because strangeness is not conserved. This interaction does occur and can occur. We've proved it can occur. However, if strangeness is not conserved, it clarifies to us that this is a weak nuclear interaction. Because obviously, if it was a strong nuclear interaction, then strangeness would be conserved. Okay? And another type of question might be this, where we've got a missing particle X. And we need to determine what particle X is. So again, we could look at charge, lepton number, and baryon number. So, the charge on the proton is plus one. The neutron has no charge, but the positron does have a charge of plus one. So in order, charge zero plus one. So in order to balance, we've got one on that side, one on this side, so particle X must have no charge. Lepton number, the proton is not a lepton, the neutron is not a lepton, the positron is an anti-lepton, therefore it's got a lepton number of minus one. So to balance particle X, if on the right hand side here we've got minus one, particle X must be plus one in order to balance with lepton number. Baryon number, uh, we've got a baryon there, goes to a baryon there, plus no baryon here. So, because baryon number is already balanced, we know the particle X, our mystery particle, must have no charge, it must be a lepton, and it can't be a baryon. Okay, so if you think about it, no charge, but it's a lepton. It tells us the only one that falls into that category is an electron neutrino, okay? So particle X must be an electron neutrino because it's got no charge <coughs> and also it's a lepton. So particle X there would be an electron neutrino. And that's how you use conservation laws to predict missing particles or to confirm that an interaction will or will not occur.